Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to build a ChatGPT-like app with Postgres as your memory. We're going to locally run Postgres in a Docker container, and then we're going to use Langchain to build our application. So it's going to look something like this. And once I, once I explain some of the ideas behind it, we're going to directly jump into the code here, and I'll show you how you can build it as well. Um, okay, so in any ChatGPT-like app, what you need your model to have is memory so that you can keep asking it questions and you expect the model to remember the context from all the questions or all older questions uh, leading up to your new question. Okay, so let's run through the example I have here. Let's say at first you want to tell the model a little about you, right? So if this is your prompt or the, the context you want to provide to the model, uh, it says how old you are, what do you do, and where do you live, right? Before sending this question to the OpenAI uh, API or the model, we want to store the question in the memory, right? So the question ends up in your Postgres memory. And then before we send the question to the model, not only do the chain, in this case the lang chain, not only does it send your prompt, it also looks at your Postgres memory database and passes all the previous questions to the model so that it can answer your new one. So in this example, when you have the first prompt and you're sending it to the model, you don't have anything else in the memory. That's why all the chain is doing is forwarding your prompt. Now, once that happens, let's say there's an output, right? In this case, this is going to be your output. Uh, this is the model saying that, hello, it's great to hear from you. How can I assist you today? Now, you take this message from the model and you again put this back into the memory. Okay. Now, your memory has two messages. It has the one you asked to the model and then it has the response from the model. Okay. Now, when you have the next question, let's say the next question is, which country do I live in? Again, it's going to put it in the memory. And then before it sends the question to the model, it's also going to send these two. So it's going to pull the previous two questions from the memory. It's going to append your new question. It's going to take these three and then pass it to the model. Now, when you get a response, because now the model actually knows from your initial context, how to answer your new question. Let's say the, the question is you live in the United States before, uh, so right after the output or you get the output, you again put it back into Postgres or your memory so that you remember United States. So the next question you have, you can use it to answer the question. So that's how the whole chain works. And the key component here is the memory. Um, I think I've made a couple other videos about uh, different ways to implement the memory. In this one, we're going to do it with Postgres. But in previous ones, I have used uh, both SQLite and Redis. And in the couple coming up, I think we're going to do MySQL and Cassandra. So whatever you use, the principles are going to be the same but it's the underlying technology that you can easily swap out. So hopefully the concepts make sense. So we're going to jump into the code so that I can show you how exactly to build it. So here's the code. Uh, let me just, okay. I have a locally running Postgres server. So you're going to see it over here. So you see a chat history table. This is the table where all the uh, all the messages are going to end up in, okay? I'm going to explain what a session ID is and how all this works. But for now, let's quickly uh, query this table. And we see that there's no result, okay? All right, now let's look at the code. So the first parts of uh, the code here should be pretty familiar if you watched some of the older videos. Uh, so we have the model, we have the template here, and then we create our chain. Okay, pretty straightforward. The The two important things to remember here is for our uh, prompt, we're using the variable question. 
and then uh, to the prompt we're passing this message placeholder with the variable name of history. This is important because this tells the prompt that all the all the past messages that is going to be fetched from the memory and passed to the model as well as where to uh, where to store the output from the model both of these are going to be in this variable named history and this variable name will connect the prompt to the postgres uh, to the postgres database and we're going to see how but for now just remember this is important, the question and then history. Uh, okay, so we have the template, we have the model, and then we have the chain, uh, pretty basic. Now, this is where the Postgres things come in. Okay, so we're gonna quickly skip over this for a second and see what's happening here. Once you have the chain, by default, the chain does not have memory. So if you were to just invoke the chain here, uh, and you asked one question and then you're asking the second question, the model will not remember what you asked it in that first question. So every time you ask a question, it's like having a blank slate. So to instead actually have memory, you wanna wrap this chain with something called runnable with message history. Uh, and this runnable is coming from the runnables.history module. So what this does is this takes in your original chain. It takes in a function. Uh, we're gonna quickly get to this. Just give me one second. Uh, but we have these two here, and this is what I mentioned over here. So the input message key is question, which is the same as your prompt here. And the history message key is history, which is the same as the placeholder variable here. So you wanna make sure these are consistent, otherwise uh, the, the model won't be, or LangChain won't be able to uh, either pull in the history correctly before asking the prompt to the, to the model, or it will be unable to put the response from the model into your chat history. So these two are pretty straightforward, and then chain is your original chain. The, the important thing here is the get by session ID. So if we quickly take a look at runnable with message history uh, and I scroll down, you're going to see that it takes in the get session history. And if you read it, it says function that returns a new base chat message history uh, object. This function should either take a single positional argument session ID uh, of type string and return a corresponding chat message history instance. So the key here is uh, we need to give it a function that returns a base chat message history, and then it takes in a session ID. Uh, if I go back here now, I'm giving it the function called get by session ID. And if you look at the get by session ID here, the first important thing was it needed to uh, it needed to return a base chat message history object or type. And then uh, over here, it takes in a session ID. Okay. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, create a connection to our locally running Postgres cluster, which is running in port 5432. Uh, once we have the connection, we uh, create an object from Postgres chat message history. This is coming from Langchain Postgres. Uh, we pass in the table name, which is chat history. It's the same name that you see over here. Um, and then uh, we have the session ID, which we're passing through from here. We're gonna see how we're generating the session ID in a little. And then we pass in the connection. Now, if you remember uh, the signature here, the function we're passing in needed to return base chat message history. However, over here, it's returning a Postgres chat message history. But if we quickly take a peek at the class here, you're gonna see that it subclasses the base chat message history. Okay, that's why it's totally fine. And most of the wrapper that you see, whether it's Postgres, Redis, Cassandra, it's gonna use a very similar, uh, very similar design where uh, it has a wrapper class that wraps around that base chat message history. 
Um, okay, and then you have the connection here. Uh, finally, this is being returned. Now, if we go to the last part, which is gonna be the session ID. So the concept of, the, the reason we need a session ID here is um, in your app, you will, uh, it's very common for you to have multiple users, right? Uh, and you want to isolate the chat history of these different users. Uh, even for the same user, one user might have different chat session, right? And you want to keep the, the history separate from each other. That's where the concept of session ID comes in. It lets you isolate the history uh, based on different users or different sessions for the same user. We're going to run through an example just in a little bit where you're going to see how the uh, session ID is both generated and retained in the database. So now the, the, the last part here is going to be uh, our while loop, which is the loop that lets the user keep asking questions to the model. Okay. So right before we uh, start the loop, we generate our session ID, which is just a randomized UUID. Inside the loop, we're asking the user to input their question. Once we have the question, we are invoking our chain with that question. So we don't need this anymore. Just we only have the question now. Um, and the last new thing here is uh, when we're invoking the chain with history, no matter what your, uh, what your underlying storage is, you need to pass in a session ID in this config parameter. And we're passing it the session ID we just generated over here. Uh, and lastly, we print out the, uh, print out the response uh, and then take another question from the user. So let's go through an example now, now that we have looked into the code. Uh, so I'll remind you that right now our database is empty. Okay. So let's run this one. So we're going to do PostgreSQL. Okay. So let's ask it, who am I? It says, I don't have access to personal data about individuals unless it has been shared with me in the course of our conversation. So clearly I have not told it who am I, and that's why it is unable to answer my question. Now let's quickly refresh our query here. Now you already see uh, two rows being inserted. Okay, if we zoom into one of these rows, uh, so you see the ID, session ID, and message. Let's look at the message. So you're going to see that it is that who am I message, and it is of type human because this was my prompt. If you look at the second one, uh, it says type AI because this is the response, and this is exactly what you saw over here. Okay, now let me tell the model a little about myself, right? Let's say I am Bob. I am 29 years old, living in uh, San Francisco. Okay, and then it says, nice to meet you, Bob. San Francisco is a vibrant city with uh, a lot a lot to offer. What do you enjoy doing there? Uh, blah, 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 right? Now, again, if I run the query, I have two new entries. One is going to be the context I provided, and then the other is going to be the response from the model. Now, if I ask it, who am I? Uh, it remembers that I'm Bob. If I ask it, where do I live? It said San Francisco. And now even if I ask it to reason, right? Which state and country do I live in? It says California in the United States. What, what are the neighboring states? Uh, we have Oregon, uh, Nevada, Arizona, right? Now, if I run my query here, you see all the new messages. If I were to look at the last one, you see that Arizona, Nevada, Oregon one. Now, one key thing to note here is for all the messages here, our session ID is the exact same. That is because when we generated our session ID, we did it outside the loop and then we passed it in here. So every single question and response uh, coming from the model or being asked to the model is using the same session ID. Hence, we're, uh, we're storing it in the, uh, in the same, uh, using the same session ID. Now, if I were to restart this, 
Uh, now, if you remember, the session ID is randomized. So th this should be a brand new session ID now. Now if I ask it, who am I? It does not remember. And if I refresh my query, uh, yes, so this is where I asked it, right? The who am I is over here. And then the response we just got is over here. If I expand this, you're gonna see that right after the last message we got in our last session, now we have a totally different session ID here, okay? Uh, and that's why uh, the, the LLM does not know anything about all the messages we shared uh, a while ago. If we uh, wanted it to remember, uh, let's hard code one of the older session ID, right? So I'm going to take this one and let's see if we can very quickly do it. Uh, we'll just pass it here. Okay, let's see if this one works. So if you remember, this is the one where I told it, let's see if we can find it, that I was Bob. Okay. Now if I rerun it, let's see if it works. Who am I? It remembers that I'm Bob, even though I did not give it any new information. Uh, if I were to rerun the query, expand the session ID cell, you're going to see the new questions. They have a session ID starting with a 43C, ending with 5E9. And if we go up, you're going to see the exact same session ID. Okay. Uh, and now just to close the loop, if I were to use the session ID here, So we use the session ID here and we rerun it. And we ask it, who am I? You're gonna say it does not remember because in the two messages we had here, I never gave it any context. So I asked it, who am I? And then it gave me that response. And the only other messages using the same session ID is the two we just asked about. Uh, again, who am I? And then the response, okay? Uh, all right, hopefully that was helpful. I do have a couple of other videos using other databases. So instead of Postgres over here, uh, I have one with Redis, one with SQLite, and I have a few coming up with, with Cassandra, I think one with Elasticsearch and one with MySQL. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below. I'll try to link both the diagram here and the code in the description below. So if you found this helpful, feel free to check that out. Uh, but yeah, uh, hopefully this was helpful and I will see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.